Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha. Uh, it's been a minute since I posted on this uh, profile, but I'm going to be taking a little bit of a break now from the main channel. I've been doing a lot of work there. <laughs> My ears, they get a little overloaded, especially this last one I just did on Between the Buried and Me. Anyhow, so uh, as, I, as I was just kind of getting my head space ready for taking some time to myself and do some things, um, I caught a video that somebody just put out in the last week or two on how Instagram has destroyed the photography world um, uh, in the professional sense of it. And um, it, it got me thinking and, and I, I empathize with them because I, I've already grown a thick callus to that particular change where technology forces you to uh, readdress what your career is. Um, I, I, I think I'm, I'm guessing that a lot of the younger people, I'd say 30 and under, um, haven't quite gone through a transition where there's a generational flip in how they used to do things. That's when you start using that phrase in your life. Well, how we used to do it when I was a kid, that usually doesn't happen until your mid thirties, probably in, into your forties. And then that's also when you experience things that change. Um, like this is how I used to do this. This is how we used to do this. Now we don't do it that way anymore. Matter of fact, it's, we can't even buy those anymore. They don't even exist anymore. Well, so getting older, that's always a fun thing uh, to kind of, for me, it's fun. I look at it that way. Not that the world is it's getting worse and it's getting, you know, but I really empathize with the photographers uh, because, you know, the music industry was the first major billion dollar catastrophic fail when it came to a technological switchover. It didn't necessarily have the same impact as, let's say, Instagram does on a photographer on the essence of the service of being a photographer, meaning taking pictures. But what happened was, is the music industry um, didn't read the book Who Moved My Cheese and fought back the Napster and, and all that. They're stealing our music and our intellectual property and we're going to sue. And as hard as, you know, it's digging a hole in the water for them. But uh, for the publishers, the record companies and the artists and the writers and stuff like that. But... Uh, you know, it, that's already been 20 some odd years ago. So those of us who've already gone through that rinse cycle, uh, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, oh, I remember that technological split and uh, shift. And then for me as a composer, well, here's a perfect example. Uh, when my father had to put out demos, he had to hire musicians, go into a studio and have the musicians play a song. And then as the 70s turned into the 80s, then you had the MIDI and the synthesizers and the little Atari ST1040 sequencer. And, and then uh, in through the 90s, modules and sounds and all kinds of cool things that, that start popping up if you're a keyboardist. I think guitar players and bass players too, but they stayed a little more organic um, when it comes to, uh, you know, you still had to play the bass, you know what I mean? Keyboards was different because what happened was is with the keyboards, all these modules came out and you could emulate strings and, and, and classics, uh, classical sections and orchestrations and synth sounds and all kinds of stuff. And it also turned uh, the non-musician into a musician quicker, being that you could call up a module with sounds and hold down two keys. And even if it wasn't a loop, but you hold down just a, a major chord, one, three, five, and it just sounded great because of the, the, you know, the, the way it sound, uh, the way it was sounding, let's say a string pad or something. Uh, you know, and moving forward, as far as the music industry is concerned, uh, one of the things that I noticed through this trajectory and change is that um, the expectation of what was being produced by composers, songwriters, and stuff like that in that nature, in that genre of tech where technology affected music composition, not so much the songwriters, you know, who are still playing guitar, bass, uh, you know, rock is a great example of there's still a lot of roots of organic uh, song composition and stuff that is really in the rock era or rock and all the subgenres, And that's why I think I'm extremely drawn to that and have been with that channel that I have. Um, but, uh, you know, for me, there was a, a great lesson my father had taught me when the very f first of, of, well, not the very first, but more of the popular mainstream synths came out, something called a DX7 from Yamaha and everybody was raging about it. And, and a couple of years later, you know, Janet Jackson and all these people used it like crazy. So, uh, you know, some people at the union were kind of tripping out a little bit. This is back at the local 47, uh, the music union in Los Angeles, you know, is it going to replace strings and all that? And nobody knew. I mean, it sounded really shitty at the time, but it never really replaced it. But what it was was really sent a shot over the bow of change that it's coming. Something's coming. But we don't know what it's going to look like. Anyhow, my dad was, you know, as an orchestrator, he made his life writing music for people. He was like, yes, hmm. 
And all of a sudden I go, Dad, where are you going? He goes, I got to go to Japan. I'm going to go buy a couple of these things and see how they work, you know? And that was instilled upon me early on as a, as, as a musician, a composer, and just a forward way of thinking, that who moved my cheese kind of vibe. And so I've, con I've kept that all the way through and through, even to this day and age. Right now, I'm currently writing stuff that's chill step. You, you guys hear it on this channel. And it's all technology, most of it. I've got something coming around the corner now where I'm blending some guitar work and stuff in it, but I'm really digging the technological aspect of EDM. And for me, that's, that is the shift in the mindset um, that I went through early on that to circle back into the photographers that perhaps, you know, as soon as the old school, and I don't mean old school like you guys are, or, or they're older or anything, but the, the photographers who went out and did powerful services with giant cameras and stuff like that might say, well, this is where that pivot comes, where how are we going to think about it? We could throw, all, for musicians, we threw up a lot of dust, and, ah, oh, this really sucks, but the ones who survived are the ones that said, ah, oh, this sucks, but, well, shit, let me see how this works, and let me see if I can make it work for me. And, uh, you know, when I listen to my very, very first classical cues and stuff that I wrote that were very cartoon-esque, you know, uh, you know, du -du 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 -du. You know, all that sort of stuff. Just it still exists kind of, but def not nowhere in the scope of what it did 30, 40 years ago. Um now if it means that I have four or five modules that if I hold down some beautiful chords, maybe manipulate the sounds a little bit and blend this and change this, it's part of the tools of creativity that that have been, you know, that I have in my toolbox that I use. And now really in the forward motion really use most of that in my business model especially when i have people who are hiring me to do things that want you know that synthy ambient ethereal edm kind of stuff and um so i have flex i've had to flex but i've always looked forward to flexing with new i think a lot of photographers saw this coming it's just becoming much louder uh and a bigger thing now because there's also photographers i'm sure that used to have these great gigs with clients that are now saying, you know, maybe not them, but their management to saying, you know, well, we've got five kids with iPhone 35s, whatever it's going to be tomorrow, the next day, and they take pictures, and it's become good enough. That's what truly has happened, I believe, in my world, that at, at a certain level, it has become good enough by the listener, by the audience. And that changes the baseline of what is acceptable by the, the people who are hiring me, per se, and most likely, possibly, the photographers who, you know, do you think you can cut your rate a little bit because we don't need your big, gigantic camera or something? And what they don't understand, though, and this is something that I really, really um, kind of, I'm very close uh, uh, with the photographers of it. It's not that... You, there's a bazillion phones out there, but people still take shitty pictures all day long because they don't have the eye. They don't have the timing. They don't have the artistic edge of the lights and stuff and how to make it work. Albeit, unfortunately, also because of all these filters and stuff, that's becoming a reset. But it's the same thing as just because there's a thousand composers out there that, can, that deem themselves as composers because they have all these things. And you actually can write a piece of music. Music doesn't mean that that it's, you know, uh, really good or acceptable in certain levels and stuff like that. But at a certain point, that starts to settle and it becomes acceptable. And, and to me personally, that's where I found what's happening in my career right now, which I am losing. I'm not losing work. I am just not interested in doing the things that the composers uh, and producers are doing now to get the work. Because I come from an older time. I come, from, I come from a time with all the libraries, the thousands of tracks that I've written. I got paid to write the music. I sold them part of my publishing or all of the publishing, and I got paid. Nowadays, there's a lot of things like stock music that's out there, all these sites like Pond5 and uh, Motion Array and, and Getty and, and Audio Jungle and all these things that have these stock music cap, you know, you can, uh, the end user can, you know, get a piece of, of music. But now they have to write hundreds of tracks, put them up in hopes that they get accepted. And, and that forward motion of writing all the music, from what I understand, at least in that world, it's, it's very daunting and stuff. But what has happened is, is there are some great composers that have come out of that movement that are willing to do things for much, much less to get their first break 
which pushes me right out, which I'm okay with. <laughs> this is a positive channel and I'm okay with it. But I will tell you uh, as I close this so I can enjoy my cup of coffee here, um, that sometimes working to stay positive through that trajectory when you know the change is happening, when you, it's not that you, it's not that I'm becoming um, uh, irrelevant, if you would, in my industry. It's just the change is happening. It's always happening. But it's been happening to me for 10 years. I've just been watching it going, here it comes, here it comes. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> here it is. So, you know, the positive thing is, is that it reinforces my ability to work on thinking positive about that and not negative and end up being some old curmudgeon -y guy going, oh, well, get, oh no, this used to be this way. Now nobody, no, rough friend of the fella mama, you know, that kind of thing. I'm like, wow, what a trip. That's just the way it is. You know, and be grateful that I've actually had a moment to experience it the way I did. So that helps elevate the burst of positivity when I have to think about it and go, wow, man, I really did a lot of fun things. And I really, this was great because you know what? All these young people coming around the corner, if we don't blow up this planet or something, <laughs> uh, will get to be my age and they too will experience the change not suffer loss or anything like that, but they will experience the change. So anyhow, that was a fairly long rant. Um, I doubt anybody's still here, but uh, that's what I like about this channel. I could just go blah, blah, blah. What? <laughs> I, I go blah, blah, blah on my other channels too. So, you know, what the hell? Anyhow, you guys take care. Have a wonderful day. Aloha.